everyone. Very, very, very welcome to Ask Vicky How This Program. Uh, today we have someone special. Every week I say we have got someone special, but this time really special because <laughs> a lot of people after Jamie come to my Ask Vicky How, even Dimi come to my Ask Vicky How uh, program, and then suddenly a lot of people start asking me, how come you never invite your very, very own husband to come for the program? And uh, I was thinking about saving the best for last, but definitely not the last one. <laughs> definitely not the last. <laughs> but, not the last but today we are going to have Mr. Alfred Chong with us. Hi, Mr. Hi. Alfred Chong. Thank you, Miss Wiki Hao, for this opportunity to speak here at your uh, Ask Wiki Hao platform. Thank you so much. Yes. You do realize that you don't have to be so formal, right? We are living under the same roof. Yes, correct. We are. Yes, indeed, we are. <laughs> Okay, today we are going to talk about will and trust. So this is something that a lot of people were pondering about, uh, especially the, when they want to pass down their legacy to the next generation, or they are afraid, especially during this pandemic period, you know, anything could happen. And, you know, as far as we're concerned, the moment you're out of the house, not when... You, not only when you're driving but as long as you're out of the house you have that opportunity or the risk involved so today we are going to talk something very very important i believe that a lot of you wanted to ask questions well please help to share this video out to all your family and friends who wants to know about trust and also view and what is the difference about trust and will this is something that everyone will ask me so rather than I answer it to you, I invite someone that is professional, yes. Mr. Alfred Chong, yes. to answer to you. Yes. Um, so if you have any question regarding about will or even trust, please feel free to leave it in the comment and we will answer it to you right away. Um, now, without further ado, let me um, introduce Mr. Alfred Chong. Alfred actually is the founder of A. Chong and Co. Uh, he actually is a civil lawyer and also a convincing lawyer. Um, so basically, his forte is about property uh, related uh, cases and also corporate related cases as well. Our firm also dabbles in, uh, we also assist our clients for criminal related matters as well. And um, not only that, but we are also involved with uh, different types of uh, wills and trust matters as well. Okay, so yeah, that's why um, I invite him along. Um, if I were to talk about divorce, like, you know, how I talk with Dewey, right? It will be very funny. Yes, very awkward. <laughs> it's going to be very awkward. Correct. So today, I'm, I have a lot of questions to ask Alfred as well. And yes. these are all the FAQ that everyone have. Everyone will ask me. Okay, so in case our maybe a lot of people are unaware and unsure about if the loved one or the close friends or family passed away, in this kind of circumstances, uh, what are the steps that one person should take? From the person passed away, what is the first thing that they should take? And uh, what are the things that they need to do? Okay. Actually, I don't know. Is it not? I okay. don't know. <laughs> All right. um, actually, the first thing that happens is that um, if one of your loved ones, I know this topic is a very uh, dear to my heart as well, if one of your loved ones or relative or your close friends were to pass away in your house, I'm saying for example, right, then you need to quickly call an ambulance, uh, call the nearest hospital or call the nearest clinic. And secondly, you need to uh, call the police as well. So then they can arrange for a medical officer to be to come over to the house and then after that for the police officer to be there as well. So and in that type of situation then the police officer and the medical officer will arrange for an ambulance to then send the body to the of your loved ones or your friend or your close friend or relative to the nearest hospital. Now you can actually in this type of circumstances you can choose whether or not you you want the um, your loved one or your close friend or relative to be sent to a private hospital. So 
So during during this process, after that, once they are sent there, then there will be the there will be a medical officer there that will then certify the time and death of the of the party, mm. and then the you will need to bring your the I, your IC and his IC or passport if he's a foreigner, and you also will need to inform what is the cause of death, and then. They will then issue. Uh, once they have examined it, then they will issue a medic, uh, med- a death, certi- uh, death certificate. Death uh, certificate. Yes, a yeah. medical certificate. Uh, what they will do is they will issue this uh, cost of death. They will give a post mortem, uh, cost of death, and then after that you can take that, and then subsequently you can go to uh, the you can go to the nearest uh, national registration department, whereby then you can register the his death using the uh, the post mortem. Uh, result and also the police report. So you also be required to lodge a police report as well before mm. you go to the National Registration Department as well. Okay, so once they launch a police report, once they have the certificates, Correct. okay, a lot of people will not know, know what to do next because you yes. are halfway crying, you know, your loved one already in the coffin or, you know, lying down there. Probably you don't know what to do, but this is something very sensitive, but this is what happened in a lot of uh, family right now. But then when they announce death and the certificate being issued, I think a lot of people will be busy calling Nibana, calling you know, the Janaza right. and all that. The body okay. will be of your loved one will be at the hospital, then you can, they will then ask you to arrange for the funeral home to go and collect the body and arrange for funeral uh, burial. Uh, um, mm. Of course, this I'm referring to. This is non-Muslims uh, for Procedure. involved. Yes, procedures, yeah. right? For Muslims, it is a bit more different because then they will be required to. Uh, they will need to go and register the death on the first day itself and get the uh, post mortem on the first day itself, and then they will have to then go to the mosque and to arrange the burial on the first day itself. Okay. Yeah. So after they arrange all this, Correct. okay, this are uh, uh, something that they will um, have to prepare. Like, actually. I was thinking about that, the same thing along the line. If anyone that close to me passed away and I, I need to handle this, I really don't know what to do. So the, after you get the certificates, you yes. arrange all these things, yes. then after that, let's say, you know, um, usually they don't have any feeling, you know, they, they won't have any feeling to do anything, especially during the ceremony, okay? You will be sobbing, you will be crying, but what's next? Okay, what's next in order to, you know, I, I heard a lot of horror story, like someone passed away, you have to run a lot of errands, especially when there is no will involved. Okay, um, before I go there, I'd like to address that during this pandemic, of course, there is also um, COVID-related death. Mm. For COVID-related deaths, right, what will happen is that the body will be sent to the hospital. Once they come out with a post-mortem, uh, report if they find that the cause of death is by way of COVID, right? Normally, they will arrange for burial straight away. Already, they don't. They want to arrange burial on the same day itself as well because they do not want the COVID to spread around as well. Otherwise, normally you take a, they, you can actually take some time to arrange for your for the death cert. You can arrange the time to go lodge a post report and all that. But for in in that kind of circumstances, right? For COVID type, right? They will try. They will arrange the. The body to be buried on the on the day itself that is brought in after they certified the cause of death um, by way of the post mortem uh, report. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So then after that, they after they bury. Yes. Okay. So which are the department they needs to run to? Okay. After the party is buried already, right? Then there is a question or not whether a will has been prepared or not. Again, mm. I am referring to is for the non-Muslims here. There se- separate rules are applicable for the Muslims as well. There is also wills for Muslims as well, but uh, there's a different distribution system. Now, if there is a what, if there is a will prepared, okay. So what is a will? Before I go into this, I'm I'm sure you are all familiar with what a will is. Okay. But, yeah, but a will is actually. I just want to for those who are not sure, a will is actually a legal instrument that is uh, provides instructions for the distribution of the assets of the of the deceased person, and then he also will arrange for the administrator uh, or a party, uh, the person that will then help to distribute the wealth, to collect all the assets and distribute the assets in accordance to his instructions inside the will itself. And so that is what a will is now. So what happens next is that when there is a will, mm. uh, so when there is a will, then different procedures is applicable. First of all, once you have arranged the burial, 
you have uh, collected the death cert, you have arranged everything itself already. The last, uh, the next step is then to see on whether or not there is a view. Okay. Now, if there is no view, we keep. What will happen is that the the distribution act will apply. So yeah. So before I uh, and in that circumstances, right? So you first thing you need to do is look for a view. Look for the view. If you're not sure whether or not a view is prepared, you can go and uh, contact your loved ones uh, or relative or the friend, close friend's lawyer. But they will be able to advise or not whether or not a view has been prepared. Have you prepared a view? Yes, I have prepared a view. Yeah. How come I was in the view? I have prepared a view quite a long time ago, but I've, uh, this was after marriage itself. I see. Yes. Okay. Yeah. So, okay. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> you yeah. know, I wanted to ask the next question, but I realized that it was, wasn't appropriate. Okay, so, if, let's say, if there wasn't a view, okay, okay. let's ask, uh, wasn't a view first. Because right now is a very crucial time whereby a lot of people think that, I'm still young, I'm only 20 old years old, uh, or I'm 30 old years old. These are all the time I heard from many people. They say, I'm only 20 old years old, I'm only 30 old years old, why should I prepare a will? And in fact, remember, a um, few years ago, you came on asking me to prepare a will? Yes, I did. And I refused to do so because I don't like the feeling of sinking in, uh, feeling that you know I'm going to be... Uh, leaving the world or someone's gonna leave me I don't like that kind of feeling of thinking about that but after you know um, so many years ago when one of the person that I know passed away at a very young age and that is when it hit me the most that young people can die as well and especially during this pandemic a lot of people uh, are you know leave suddenly in a sudden uh, pandemic and they didn't leave a will. Correct. Okay? They didn't